How resilient are Veracrypt and Lux encrypted volumes against data corruption? The question has been partly answered, but that's still not what I'm exactly looking for. See for update 1 down there. I'm planning to encrypt some file systems with Veracrypt and Lux, but my fears are that if a single problem happens, I would not be able to mount the partitions again thus losing all the data stored inside them. Due to damaged sectors slash blocks, power failure during a writing operation, file system errors, etc. Also, Veracrypt may have forked TrueCrypt's repair tools, but I'm not counting on it and looking more about real cases. I also know about RAID and backup slash vaults, but it's not what I'm looking for. So the question is, how resilient are encrypted partitions themselves with Veracrypt and Lux? Update 1. My question is more about the resilience of the encrypted partition and its data, rather than about saving the master key, metadata or headers. The problem is similar to a solid 7-zip archive, if a single bit is damaged in the middle, then you lose the whole archive. Will encrypted partitions be as vulnerable? Excluding master key, metadata and headers. P.S. Sorry if I don't answer right away, I'm working and traveling around the world thus making this post related and I often face time squeezing business. But, I will definitely answer back for sure. Thanks to all the answers people provided, the definitive answer is 100% complete. I don't have much time these days. So I'll edit my own answer later. Since all the answers people gave here are completely useful, this will just be a recap of what they said, plus my findings too. Anyway, here's one of my findings that will debunk a lot of confusion I met, and it mostly concerned. What block means, since it's a term that is overly and mistakenly used. This URL. Also, you'll find a standard way to talk about things here, and avoid the block confusion. This URL. In short terms, you can change an encrypted block containing the word 400 to be 800. This means encrypted block level layer is completely non-solid, instead of believing that this will act like a normal file system, EA Veracrypt fact. Also, I should have stumbled upon that link two months ago. This URL. Since Veracrypt is a TrueCrypt's fork, it will certainly works the same. P.S. Any additional answer is still welcome, and will be added to my own answer. In practice, it's almost as resilient with encryption as without it, as long you back up the master key and metadata properly. A part of metadata, the corruption would affect just the block of the corrupted bit, in most cases just 16 bytes of it. For most of the situations of data corruption, with the key and tools, like your password and veracrypt slash lux, you have the same access as a non-encrypted disk, just like you do normally with everyday use of an encrypted disk. Encryption would only add an additional step, open an encrypted partition, than ordinary. So in this case, it behaviors just like non-encrypted data. With Veracrypt or Lux, you have to store the master key in the disk that is encrypted with your password. Damaging the sectors would cause permanent data lost. This can be easily solved with master key backup, few kilobytes in size, something easy to do with both software, and it's highly recommended for everyone. Details about non-metadata. Both Veracrypt and Lux uses XDS today. In this mode, it's calculated a key for every block. In a simplification, to encrypt block I you use a key generated with the master keys and the block number. So, the encryption of one block in independent of another. If you corrupt some information, it will be restrict to that block. In XDS, 
It breaks the block and subblocks of 16 bytes usually and creates a key and encrypt that subblock with it. That means that if we change a bit on it, only the 16 bytes would be affected. As as test, changing a single bit in a lux volume, it changes 16 bytes of the original file to gibberish, but the others 496 stills unchange. In a 7-zip file, it uses a stream method that all bytes are chained, so one byte change would affect all the remaining ones. This is not the case here. Some consider this a problem, as you can know with precision of 16 bytes when and where you change a plain text, comparing just the encrypted data. More interesting information about this can be found on these links. This URL. This URL. This URL. Details about master key. Lux. Lux have a few sectors in the beginning of the partition, or disk with metadata, storing encryption methods, other parameters and 8 key slots. For encrypting and decrypting the disk, it uses a master key, a big random number generated when create a Lux container. To store it, it encrypt the master key with your password, through iterating a cryptographic hash function many times over the password and generating a specific key for that slot. You can have eight different passwords for the same disk, each one encrypting the master key with a different password in a slot. When you change the password, it's as simple as encrypting the master key and not changing all the partition. So, when the slots and metadata is corrupted, you can't recover the master key that is really used to decrypt, losing all data on disk. This is an easy way to fast destroy all your data. But if you have a backup of the volume header, it's pretty easy to recover it. Below is a copy of Luxstack about backup extracted from this URL. While you could just copy the appropriate number of bytes from the start of the Lux partition, the best way is to use command option Luxita backup of crypt setup. This protects also against errors when non-standard parameters have been used in Lux partition creation. Example. To restore, use the inverse command, i.e. If you are unsure about a header to be restored, make a backup of the current one first. You can also test the header file without restoring it by using the header option for a detached header like this. If that unlocks your keys locked, you are good. Do not forget to close the device again. Under some circumstances, damaged header, this fails. Then use the following steps. First determine the master key size. Gives a line of the form. With bits equal to 256 for the old defaults and 512 for the new. Defaults. 256 bits equals a total header size of 1 apostrophe, 05 to 672 bytes and 500, and 12 bits 1 of 2 mid. See also item 6.12, if looks dump fails, assume 2 mid, but be aware that if you restore that, you may also restore the first 1 meter or so of the file system. Do not change the file system if you were unable to determine the header size. With that, restoring a too large header backup is still safe. Second, dump the header to file. There are many ways to do it, I prefer the following. Or For a 2 mib header, verify the size of the dump file to be sure. To restore such a backup, you can try Luke's header restore or do a more basic. Veracrypt. Veracrypt is similar to Lux. 
I'm not used with it as I was with TrueCrypt, but the general idea holds. Veracrypt just have one key slot, so you can't have more than one password at the same time. But you can have a hidden volume, it stores the metadata in the end of the partition, or disk or file. The hidden volume has a different master key, and will use the end of the partition as overlapped space. The idea that you should backup is the same. This can be done with Tools and GT, Backup Volume Header, and Tools and GT, Restore Volume Header. With system encryption, it used to create a bootable disk with key backup that recovers the TrueCrypt logo and keys if any damage happens. It's done before it encrypt anything, and as far as I know Veracrypt continued doing the same way. For more details see this link this URL. Security considerations about backup keys. If you have a leaked password for example, and changes the volume password to a new, strong and secure one, someone with access to the backup would still be able to decrypt the files with the old password. The backup is basically the master key encrypted with the old password. So, when changing passwords, it's also needed to make a new backup and destroy the older ones. And destroying data permanently can be very trick. For every backup you have with that password, is a possible way to decrypt data with that password. This can be used in Veracrypt for instance, using a universal password, like in a corporation, backing it up and changing for another password. So the department could recover the access to that volume even if someone lost the password, think as a master password, but don't confuse with the master key from earlier. Final thoughts, TL, Doctor. The probability of damaging the specific sector with the master key is less likely than you having a complete disk failure. So if this data is important, you should have a backup of it instead just the volume headers, master key. And corruption of data spread little, 16 bytes, resulting acceptable for most users. So a bad block in the middle of the partition or disk would affect only that block. And a few bits errors in a sector is restricted to that sector, and won't even affect totally a 512 byte sector. Update, the 23rd of January 2017, add more information based on the op comments. I have compiled below some information about the resiliency of Veracrypt slash TrueCrypt containers. From Veracrypt Data Corruption TC slash VC store the volume header at two place, at the start and at the end of volume. The one at the start is the main one and the one at the end is for backup. This mechanism is usually sufficient to enable access when a part of the drive is damaged or corrupted because the damage is often local. If the damage occurred to both the start and the end of the drive, then the drive is almost certainly dead. Please note that in case of a damaged or corrupted drive, you'll have the same data loss as when you don't use encryption. This means that even if you are able to mount the volume, their data read may be corrupted. So, always think about data backup because encryption doesn't protect from data corruption. From the Veracrypt FAQ What will happen when a part of a Veracrypt volume becomes corrupted? In encrypted data, one corrupted bit usually corrupts the whole ciphertext block in which it occurred. The ciphertext block size used by Veracrypt is 16 bytes, i.e., 128 bits. The mode of operation used by Veracrypt ensures that if data corruption occurs within a block, the remaining blocks are not affected. What do I do when the encrypted file system on my Veracrypt volume is corrupted? file system within a Veracrypt volume may become corrupted in the same way as any normal unencrypted file system. When that happens, you can use file system repair tool supplied with your operating system to fix it. In Windows, it is the CHKDSK tool. 
Veracrypt provides an easy way to use this tool on a Veracrypt volume, right click the mounted volume in the main Veracrypt window, in the drive list, and from the context menu select repair file system. Small data corruption should then have only local effect and will not destroy the entire container. However, I advise against encrypting a whole volume slash partition and especially the system drive, as recovery can then be more complicated. Take good backups, especially for the volume header. And remember that, just as for a real disk or folder, corruption in the disk slash file headers may make data recuperation difficult and may require advanced utilities. I believe that Lux does not have a second header on disk, so you have to be even more careful about keeping a backup. The following relates to your section update 1. Both Veracrypt and Lux provide the same resilience towards random data sector failures assuming that you successfully mounted the partitions. The reason is that they both act as an additional layer below the operating system read slash write function of sectors. They provide sector oriented encryption. Both encryption schemes do not change the on disk structure layout. This way of operation does not correspond to the limitations of the storage technique of a solid 7z archive. It even does not correspond to that of a normal 7z archive. In addition to that please keep in mind the situation before mounting. The anti-forensic techniques of Lux blow up metadata to three sectors, header, plus 4000, stripes, 16, assumed max key length, 8, key slots, bytes equals 512,003 bytes equals tilde 1000 sectors. There is no backup of this structure available. Compare this to a standard Veracrypt header, only data, no hidden partition with 512 byte equals one sector. In addition to that, there is a backup header at the end of the file system. The header resilience of Lux compared to Veracrypt is about 0.1% as one bad sector used by the Lux header can make the disk unreadable. I am writing can as I am unable to determine reading the on-disk format specification if such a shot will affect all eight available key slots or just one. If you want to support the channel, please consider subscribing.